Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Change Hearts Monday Night Conference Call. I'm so excited to have Ms. Chantel Suber to lead the call tonight. Her and I connected through social media, I believe through Pinky Promise, um, years mm -hmm. ago, and I just love her. She just has such a joy about her, and I'm super excited to have her to lead the call tonight. And she is a kindergarten teacher, and she also has this amazing blog, blessedbeautiesblog.wordpress.com. And your girl is also on YouTube, and you can YouTube her channel. It's Blessed Beauties Vlog with a V. So make sure you check her out, subscribe, and all of that. But I'll go ahead and turn it over to her. Thank you, Angel. Good evening, everybody. I am so excited. I'm just honored to have this opportunity to share with you guys um, what is laid on my heart. And um, I won't keep you guys too long because, as you've noticed my vlogs, I'm not – too lengthy, so um, I just wanted us to just just pray really quick um, before we get started. God, I just thank you, oh God, for this opportunity to come to your people, oh God, to sow seeds into their hearts, Lord. I pray that everything that comes out, oh God, will be what you want me to say, Lord, that my flesh will not glory in your sight, Lord. I pray that you will encourage your people on this week, oh God, that the word and the encouragement that will come forth will bring a harvest in due season. I pray, oh God, that you just bless everyone that is on this call, bless Angel and bless her ministry, oh God, and we just thank you, oh God, for this moment, for this time to join together and to glorify you, Lord. So we just thank you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so um, when I first got the invitation to um, do this call, I was wondering um, what I would talk about because, you know, it's a, you know when you do something, you want to make sure that you're not just haphazardly, you know, bringing something forth to people. Um, so I'm really conscious of that. And one thing that was laid on my heart was um, just encouraging people to know that they are still qualified. Um, so I think about um, what I should, you know, call it or whatever. And basically – I'm just saying that we're qualified kings and queens, and, you know, we might have done some things in our past that we might feel are like, okay, God, I've made this mess up and I've done this. Like, you can't use me. Like, this is what, you know, you've laid on my heart, but I've done this, that, and a third, and we kind of feel like we've disqualified ourselves from God's plan. And um, a quote that I thought about was um, along the lines of saying that you're not that powerful that you can stop change or alter God's will for your life. Like we feel like we're so, we've messed up so much and we've done this or we haven't done this and we feel like, okay, I can't or I'm not worthy to do this. And so we have to remind ourselves that we're not that powerful as we think we are, that we can be like, okay, God, mm -mm. and like he's just going to be like, all right, you're right. Like, no, he still wants to use you. He still wants to get the glory out of your life. And God when we're broken and when we're we admit our flaws and our you know things that we other people might even look at us and be like no you can't accomplish this you know that's when God can really get the glory because we know and they'll know that it was nobody but God um, so just to encourage you to know that you're called for such a time as this that you know when God created you and when you were still in your mother's womb God knew this year 2017 on this day, this night, that, you know, or whenever that he wanted to use you. Like, he could use anyone else. He could, you know, choose another vessel to accomplish whatever he wanted to accomplish, but he wants us, with even with our flaws and even with our, you know, shortcomings, that he still has need of us. Um, and a scripture that I thought about was Philippians 1 and 6. Um, which I love, and it says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. So those that scripture, when it says, um, he who began a good work in you, that shows us that it's nothing that we could do, there's nothing that our parents could do, nothing that our friends or those who might be speaking ill will against us can do that had put this work in our heart and in, in our spirits, like it's nobody but God. That God began this good work in us and that he's going to complete it. Um, and so I just put this question down that I've also seen before. What would you do if you knew that you couldn't fail? 
like if you knew that you were that you're fearless, which we are, but we also have these moments where we're fearful and we're scared. Like what do you what would you do if you knew that you couldn't fail, that there was no way that you would not be successful? Like what would you do? And to kind of have that same that same um, encouragement, that same power, that same confidence that okay, God, I messed up yesterday, I messed up today, and I even messed up a few minutes ago. But you know, to to com- continue to um, to move forward because you know that's what God wants us to do. We, he's not looking for for perfect vessels. He's not looking for people who are perfect. Um, and the only one that was perfect was Jesus Christ. And when He died on the cross for us. That, you know, broke the veil that we can come boldly before him. We don't have to feel timid when we come to God and we, you know, seek his will for our lives. But when we pray for, pray to him and ask him to forgive us, that he is just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Like when we really understand the value of the cross, then we realize that, okay, my flaws don't disqualify me from God's will for for my life. So, um, also, I wanted I put down to blaze trails that no one has blazed before. You know, you might have you might be scared to um, to step out and do different things. I know when I started my vlog, and I'm sure you know Angel or anyone else who has started new things, they might have been like, uh, kind of nervous about <laughs> kind of nervous about this guy. I kind of feel like, do you really want me to do this? Like, you choosing me? Like, do you know? Well, you're choosing it. He's like, I know exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> and so we can kind of feel like, okay, I am scared. I am nervous. I don't know where, where I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing. And, um, you know, we might see that or we might look around and see, okay, I don't know of anyone else who has done this or um, people are discouraging me from doing this because, you know, it hasn't been done before. So to be fearless, it's not an easy thing when you do what God tells you to do. And it's definitely not easy when it's like you don't have anyone to look towards. Um, But it is encouraging to know that God has a plan for our life. In Jeremiah 29 and 11, which says, you know, I know the plans that I have for you. Um, so we have to remind ourselves, even when we're starting on this journey, that it's not going to always make sense. You might have more questions than answers, <laughs> and you might still feel like as you're moving along, like, God, I'm not worthy of this. Um, but to know that we are qualified, um, and generations and souls are waiting for us to do what God has called us to do. Um, it's not about you. We might feel like, okay, I'm not, and I can't, and I don't want to do this. But what about this person tomorrow or this person next year or years, generations down the line that will be impacted by your obedience or even your disobedience? Like if you're doing what God wants you to do, how it's going to encourage someone else, and that person might talk to somebody else and encourage them. And, you know, it's like a a trickling down effect. It's a domino effect. Um, whether you're obeying God and whether you're not obeying him. And it's a, it's a responsibility for us as believers to go out and make disciples. So that means we have to be an example. We have to be able to understand the role that we have and how impactful it is. And um, when we do God's will, that it's not about us. Um, you know, when Jesus came, he wasn't, you know, Jesus, Jesus is me, all eyes on me. He came to do the Father's will. And he came to do the will of God. And so um, we have to remember that it is, like I said, that souls are waiting on you. Like it's not, again, we can't be like, okay, I'm going to do it next year. I'm going to do it when I feel like it. Or I'm going to do it when I'm more prepared or more qualified. Like do it now. And, um, you know, whatever God has laid on your heart to do, um, just do it, and when you do it, you'll see eventually, like, okay, God, you look back, and you're like, you're right. And it might even prepare you for where God wants to take you next, but we have to be obedient in the small things. Um, and it's not always comfortable, but it's necessary. <laughs> it doesn't feel too great. You might feel like you're walking on eggshells, you're walking on coal, and you're like, ugh. 
and, you know, it's, it doesn't always feel like you're doing what you're supposed to do, um, but we're flesh and we're trying to accomplish a spiritual mission, and we're on a spiritual mission to do um, what God wants us to do. And I was thinking about people in the Bible that, you know, felt like I'm not qualified or this plan, this mission, God's will for my life is too much for me. God, choose choose somebody else. He or she looks like they could do it. I don't have this degree. I don't have this experience. I don't talk like this. I don't have this much money. Like, choose them. They look like they have it. <laughs> and that's, you know, not the way we should be thinking, but that's, you know, that's a normal thing to think and to feel because, you know, like I said, we're flesh. Um, so I was thinking and looking um, and studying different people in the Bible that might have felt disqualified, and some of them, like David, who had a past um, when he was king, and how he he was a murderer and he was an adulterer, but God God still used him, and he's a man after God's own heart, even with even with the flaws. Like, how can you be a man or a woman? after God's own heart, and you've done this, that, and the third. That's because God doesn't look at our accolades. He doesn't look at our achievements. He doesn't care about our degrees, and those are great things, but that we could have all of those things and not be in the will of God. Um, and also I think looking at Moses, and um, and when God called Moses, Moses said that he wasn't eloquent enough and that he was slow speech and a, and a slow tongue. Like, he was like, I can't talk like this. I can't, you know, I won't be able to do God's will because I'm not boom, boom, boom. But God qualified us, and he calls us regardless of those things. And, you know, if we can see and look at people who God used to do amazing things, regardless of their past, why can't he use you? Like, why wouldn't he want to use you? He, if we, if we think about people that are, that we might quote, unquote, think are perfect and they accomplish this, then it's a great thing if they do God's will. But if you see somebody also who is like, look, I've messed up, I've been locked up, I've done this, that, and a third, and God still used me, and not saying that people who've accomplished those things and appear to be perfect won't impact people because they might impact somebody else, but if you, God might use you to impact someone that might also feel the same way. And, you know, you might have, you might not be eloquent, like just like Moses felt like he wasn't, but when you look at how God used them, then he is able to, to use you in the same way and, um, and even when you make the decision regardless of, excuse me, your past and your shortcomings, um, be prepared <laughs> for those who might feel jealous and try to kill, quote, unquote, or discourage you. And I was looking at First Samuel 16 when Samuel anoints David, but and as, you know, Dave, God uses David and David becomes king. Saul gets jealous, and he tries to kill him, and you have to be prepared that when you move forward in what God has called you to do, that there might be people that are close to you that might start off rooting for you, that might start off being, like, you know, on your side, and later on will be side on you, like, mm, and trying to kill the plan that God has for you. Um, so you have to be prepared and um, be able to discern those things, even within yourself, as you start to accomplish what God wants you to do. Those insecurities and those, you know, flaws will try to creep up. Like, remember when you used to do this? Remember when you said this or acted like this? And then, you know, it might try to have you backslide and stop what God wants you to do. Um so another thing I put down, because I do have to put down my notes because I know how I am, that God doesn't tweak his plans to appease your flesh. God doesn't say, okay, she doesn't feel comfortable with this, so let me change it. Or she feels like 
or he feels like they aren't worthy to do this. So let me just give them, you know, an easier will. Let me give them an easier test. Let me give them this. Like, no, he doesn't tweak his plans to please our flesh. Um, And so whatever God's will is, and even if you know it or you don't, you know, if you don't know it, continue to seek him and ask him and wait for him to tell you what to do because it's important that while we're doing God's will to not get distracted with other things that could um, derail us. So 2 Corinthians 3 and 5 which says, not that we are competent in ourselves, but our confidence, our confidence comes from God. And 1 Corinthians 1 and 27 says that God chose the foolish things of this world to shame the wise, and God chose the weak things of this world to shame the strong. So the things that we think are foolish, the things that we think are unworthy, the things in us that we might feel, okay, God, this is not, I'm not good enough to do this, are the things that God will use to confound the wise. We might think that we are so wise and we are so much smarter than God. Like, huh? Like, who are you to think that God still doesn't want to use you? Like, he knew when he created you that you was going to mess up before you knew you were going to mess up. And you still, he still wants you. Like, he's still has need of you. He's like, there's somebody out there that is waiting on this guy and this girl to do what I have told them to do. And, um, you know, you might even think what you're doing is insignificant. Like, I know when I started Vlogs, nobody's going to look at these. What am I doing? Nobody's going to check on these. Nobody's going to be encouraged. But as you continue to go along, and I've witnessed that as you continue to go along, that you see okay, God, this that you started in me, you're going to complete it. And you begin this good work in me. This is not about me. This is not about how many people watch and how many people share and who claps. But Because those same, hand, those same hands that clap and share for you will be the same hands that point a finger when you fail or mess up. So, you know, don't feel as though there's – um. You get you get three strikes and you're out. The mercies of God is because of His mercies that we are not consumed. And so, a song that I love to to listen to um, is called Journal by Casey J. So if you ever get a chance to to listen to that, um, it's a great song and it's an, a perfect example um, where she's in this this moment where she's like, okay, God, you can't use me. I'm I'm this, I'm not this, and I'm too shy, I'm fearful, and I'm nervous about what other people are going to say, so you can't use me. Don't try to use me. Like, how are we? And it, it doesn't, it doesn't even, it doesn't even put God in, in a box. It puts us in a box. Like, God will still be able to use whoever he wants to use. He'll be able to get the glory out of whoever he wants to get the glory out of. And we sit here scared to to step out. We're scared to to um, to be obedient. Um, so we put ourselves in this box to where we can't get out and really get what God has for us. Like, he's trying to give something to you. Like, when you open up your hands, and do what I tell you to do, and so I can put something in there that will blow your mind. Um, and we have to let go of what we think that our life should be and watch God blow our minds. Like, if you completely, like, surrender everything, just like, okay, God, this is what I desire, but if this is not what you want, show me what you want. And if this is what you want me to do, show me what you want me to do. Um, you ever heard of the the quote, um, Write um write your plans, but give God the eraser. Like give God the eraser. The uh uh-uh. This is what you thought. Oh no, we're going to take this away. <laughs> we're going to add this, and we're going to change that right here. And you know, so we have to be able to to surrender, and that's a part of being able to know that we're we're qualified because we surrender our will to God. It's about our hearts. It's about our spirit being able to understand that God this is about you 
and I'm going to do what you want me to do. It may look crazy. I may not feel like doing this. This may feel real uncomfortable right now, but, you know, in our, you know, we plan our life, but God God determines the steps that we take to get to to where he wants us to be. Um, and so just to kind of, I'm almost done. So you, just like I said, we're qualified queens of qualified kings. You're qualified kings as well. You know, just continue to cleanse yourself every day. Um, just ask God to to show you, to lead you, and to guide you because he still has need of you regardless of what you've done, you know, regardless of when you might have messed up, that his forgiveness and his love is there with open arms to to show us the way. And we, as, you know, Christians, should be remembered that he's not looking for perfect people. He's looking for willing vessels that are um, willing to surrender and to be obedient to him. Don't look at who's who's against you. Don't even listen to the thoughts, the thoughts that are in your own head because that battlefield of the mind is real. <laughs> that struggle is real. You have a full-blown conversation with yourself. And <laughs> talk yourself out of the will of God. So um, that's what I wanted to say and just to to really do it and watch God blow your mind. Watch God give you more than what you pray for. Watch God um, use you to impact other people, and then they'll impact generations, which will change the world. We don't understand nothing's too big and nothing's too small. Obedience is obedience. And just like we have consequences for disobedience, there's consequences for obeying the will of God, and those are, that are good consequences. So, So that's that's all I wanted to share, um, and I just kind of wanted to, Angel, if you don't mind, could I close out in prayer really quick? Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead, girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay, God, we just thank you, oh God, for this, this moment. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you still love us, that you still have need of us. God, we're humbled, and oh God, we I pray, oh God, that we would just lay our plans, we will lay out lay, lay out our ideas and our visions of God, that we will surrender it, that we will lay it at your feet, that we will put our everything in your hands, oh God, and allow you to mold us, to make us, to shape us, to lead us and guide us, Lord. I pray that the encouragement that went forth will produce a harvest, that it will be planted into good soil, that those who hear it will be able to understand, oh God, that you love us, that you still need, have need of us, that you still, oh God, are willing to use us if we are willing to be used by you. So I thank you, oh God, for this word, and I pray that you will encourage your people on this week, that you will make a way that even in the little things as you go throughout this week, that we will be obedient to you and that we will watch, oh God, the amazing things that you will do if we can be obedient in the small things, oh God, that you will bless us with more things to be obedient, maybe be, oh God, bold and confident in who you have called us to be. And we thank you, Lord, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much, Chantel, for leading the call tonight. Such an awesome word just to remind and encourage us that we are qualified even when we think that we are not. God has already made a plan for us, and all we have to do is be obedient and walk in it. So thank you so much for that great, great word. For anyone who tuned in late, um, just once again, make sure that you check out Chantel's blog at blessedbeautiesblog.wordpress.com, and then also um, you can find her on YouTube at Blessed Beauties Vlog with a V. And I will. This conference call is recorded. I will post that to my YouTube channel on tomorrow, youtube.com backslash Angel Walston, and it will have all of her contact information for you to get connected with her. So thank you once again, Chantel. Such a great word for us on tonight. And next week we'll go back to um, the regular conference calls with me doing them. But I'm just so thankful for all the ladies who I've had over these last couple of weeks who've just shared what God has placed on their heart. So I hope that you all have been encouraged. I love you all. Have a great night, and we'll talk to you next Monday.